Good evening, everyone. I'm Sibhi Sudhagaran. On behalf of Indian Business and Professional Council, a warm welcome to all of you. Today, we are hosting the third edition of Distinguished Doyens and Gen Next, which is a felicitation series. And it's a distinct honor that today we have Dr. Ram Baksani and Ms. Rachna Baksani Mirpuri, distinguished, one of the towering businessmen, business leader in the Indian community here. It's a prolific career of six decades, but we have tried to sum it up in uh, two minutes in a short profile AV. So let's have the AV first.
May I please request our president, Mr. Suresh Kumar, to please come on stage. Also, if I may invite a big round of applause for Dr. Ram Baksani and Ms. Rashtan, please come on stage and we'll begin with the program. So, Ram, impressive credentials as always. You know, and I didn't know the list was as long as this, including uh, Rachna, your uh, credentials are brilliant. Welcome to IPPC, uh, to this function, and I'm glad you're joining among your th three sisters, or two sisters, three, three in all, and uh, you represent all of them, you represent all of them, and uh, please give our best wishes and regards to uh, both Chetna and to uh, Gauri. Gauri is now called Hanisha, Hanisha. right? So you're, you're done good homework. I've done some homework, okay, okay. So Ram, let's start at the right beginning, you know, beginning of your life. Mm. Um, you were born in uh, Hyderabad, Sin. That's correct. And but let, let me compliment uh, Suresh, uh, because I, I can't resist complimenting you. Yes. I mean, I have attended two earlier functions. Yeah, I was uh, born in Hyderabad. Born in Hyderabad, Sin, and uh, at a fairly young age, sadly, you lost your father. Yeah, at and the age of five, I lost my father. Yeah. And, uh, he was 36. Uh, he was 36. 36. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can see you read my and, book very uh, well. <laughs> followed by, you know, a second tragedy, namely the partition, which That's moved the family within a few years. Uh, <coughs> Not few years. Mm. Uh, Tell us about it. Yeah, I... I mean, I was five years old. I, uh, we lost our father when he was 36. Uh, it was uh, 24th of January, uh, 24th of December, 1947. And uh, after his passing away, and uh, after his la last rites, we moved to. Uh, yes. Uh, at that time, it, it was India, India. India, <laughs> India. Uh, the present portion of India. You moved to another part of India. Did that's, you actually that's moved correct. to I Chennai was, or Madras? Yeah, I have I, I, I still not digested the idea. Is it? That uh, we were born in Pakistan. No, we were born in India. Mm. At that time, it was India. Uh, yes. yes. Oh, <laughs> it was in, in India. And... Uh, they waited for you to leave and then on the 15th <laughs> of August, they renamed it Pakistan. <laughs> okay. Okay, that part, yeah. that part of India. And so you moved to Chennai first, or Bar Madras as it was called, and then uh, Yes, yes. Tell yes, us yes. about this that. Is, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think the, uh, I, this, this is a good uh, question which you asked because not many of uh, not many people, uh, know people will, be, uh, will be knowing about that. Uh, because no, and uh, although it is mentioned in my autobiography, but uh, uh, there are not many readers of autobiography because it's a boring uh, exercise when you go through uh, autobiography. Actually, yeah. it was quite interesting, frankly, <laughs> and, uh, you know, so, except that today we're not taking the high road. <laughs> we're, we're going down memory lane. That's correct. Yeah. So, from Hyderabad Sindh in a train with my grandmother and my mother and five siblings, mm -hmm. uh, me and five more, we moved. The first stop was Marwa mm -hmm. by, by train. And from Marwar, I distinctly remember we took a bus a uh, little, little while and then came to Ahmedabad. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> in Ahmedabad, uh, we spent a couple of days on the platform, enjoying the hospitality of uh, uh, several voluntary organizations, eating puri bhaji, uh, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But th they were yes. uh, so kind. because. Those were the days when uh, Sindhis as refugees could, could travel all over the country mm. without ticket. Because whenever a ticket collector would ask about the ticket, you just say refugee. That, that itself was a big, uh, big ticket. And uh, so from uh, my uncle, mm. means uh, my mother's sister used to live in Chennai. Uh, now, at that time, Madras. So she said that you come down here and uh, uh, Madras is a good place. So from Ahmedabad, uh, we moved via Bombay to Madras and uh, stayed there uh, uh, for, for some, some time. time. And yes. then you moved to Baroda to study. Uh, yes. Uh, the then my, my, my paternal uncle was in 
Macau, very near to Hong Kong, and he said, you come to, because we had no, uh, I mean, uh, a senior person in our family to lead us. I was five years, my elder brother was uh, six years elder to me, but uh, uh, so we had to simply follow whatever was other decided. was saying. Was decided. So then we came to, he, he said you come to Baroda. Hmm. So from Madras to Baroda. But uh, I had my uh, KG education in Madras, uh, in, in a convent school. Hmm. Th that was uh, only uh, one class which I studied. Your preschool in Madras, okay. Exactly, I still remember Ch Chule. Oh. If you know Madras well, or maybe if some people, people are from Madras. And then uh, in Baroda schooling, um, yes, uh, it was a Sindhi high school. Yes, it was a Sindh Hindu high school. Mm. Uh, it was also very interesting because uh, with so many people coming from uh, Sindh and migrating, there were not many uh, facilities which could accommodate uh, uh, so Sindhis. Mm. So there was a school a Gujarati medium school, they were very kind. Uh, they said, we are running one shift. Mm. You can take the school for another shift. Mm. But only consideration has to be that during winter, they will come in the afternoon, mm. Sindhis will come in the morning. morning. Okay. And during summer, mm. they will come in the morning and we... So you got the scorching sun. Yes, I mean, uh, uh, what that, is, that still, was the deal. Uh, that was a deal, but uh, deal. Yeah. still we could get accommodation and okay. uh, I mean, that, that's a big thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I, I remember in the, in the morning, Baroda is pretty cold during uh, winter mm -hmm. and the school used to open at seven o'clock in the morning and the school was about uh, four kilometers away from my home. In those days we had nine, no buses. Mm -hmm no cycles, mm. no transportation, uh, we had to walk. Mm. Uh, four kilometers to walk from uh, home to school. Mm. Uh, and uh, before that also we had to do some homework because mm. my mother would tell me to go and uh, bring some water from the pump. Okay. Homework, for, <laughs> work for the home. <laughs> yes, Working yes for the home. but it was uh, really enjoyable. And, uh, and then you bought a cycle. Uh, no, 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 no. Much later. No, no, no. Uh, throughout my studies, it was leg, leg, leg work. Leg work. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, no cycle, no buses. No cycle, no buses. Uh, but uh, I mean, in those days, there was no culture of buses and all this. Yes. Some uh, affluent class may ha may be having cycles in those days, but uh, nothing more than that. And then you were acting in Sindhi plays, so or you started acting. No, that is much later. Much in, later. In, in Dubai. In, in Baroda? Baroda I played in Gujarati. Gujarati? Mm. I, I, I don't know how many Gujaratis are there. Bharatwai is here. Bharatwai here. Bharatwai yeah. is here. I played in two uh, dramas, Parke Bhane. Uh, he, he understands the, uh, the meaning of Parke Bhane. Than. That means uh, at others' cast. Uh, which I am not uh, in my true uh, real real life, <laughs> Parke Bhane <laughs> and uh, Shisha Mahutarya. Mm -hmm. So, do, I mean, Gujaratis can understand. Eh? Some people understand, <laughs> yes, I'm sure. Yeah, yes, mm -hmm. uh, they were very successful dramas. Is it? Yes. Okay. So, that was your first initiation into the theatre? That's correct. Mm -hmm. I. I mean, it, it, it was fun acting there mm. um, and, uh, and at the same time challenge because to act in uh, a film is much easier mm. than uh, a play because uh, here there are no retakes. Absolutely. Uh, if you make the mistake, you spoil the show. That's it. Um, uh, chapters you over. Won't ah. get, you won't get another play. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, or you have to make it up. Yes, absolutely. And so Ram, from there, in November 1959, you landed in Dubai. Hmm? <laughs> yes. And uh, let, let, let me. 18th uh, of November, to be my precise. God. Yes. I, I was about to tell you, yes, you remember the date, the year, and uh, yes. yes. And you arrived by? 
by Dara, ship, by by ship Dara. Dara. Which later there was a bomb explosion it, it, and it, after it, 18 months it, it collapsed. Was, it, it was sadly, known, uh, sadly. Yeah. Mm. It, uh, and, and unfortunately Tell us about those days when you landed, what happened? What was your first impression of Dubai? You came from Sharjah or you came directly? No, 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 no. no. This uh, the ship came to Dubai. Dara came to Dubai. Mm. From Bombay to Karachi mm. and the brief stopover in Muscat mm -hmm. and then Dubai. Okay. And it was a very simple procedure. Mm. So-called immigration officer. Mm. He would board the uh, ship, collect passport mm. and go away. Mm. And uh, of course, uh, November, the, so the ship docked in mid-sea because in those days there was a, Dubai had uh, not even a single port. Ship, all the ships would, uh, I mean, park mid-sea and uh, in the smaller boats we would have to get down mm. and uh, come to, to the boat and then uh, yeah, and to come to uh, where now Divan Amiri is there mm -hmm. uh, at the moment, yes. uh, th there we would come. Now it was a quite a risky thing for me because I was uh, maybe uh, one and a half times the size which I am, mm -hmm. and uh, I did not know swimming mm. at that time. <laughs> I was quite, uh, uh, I mean, uh, especially from uh, the ship to the boat. The ship to the boat, uh, I had to jump. Uh, and uh, newcomer from uh, India, uh, but uh, again I had to jump, I had to jump, so then we jump, I jumped and then came to uh, the po I mean that uh, uh, dock and the custom, this uh, immigration officer says, take your goods and t tomorrow your passport will be delivered in your office. Mm. In your office? Uh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, th that was very simple and uh, th that means uh, how much a trust existed and how the whole country ran on trust. And then th tell us about then, uh, th your th professional life Then I, first. The first evening was excellent and uh, later also, um, uh, not, not that uh, there has been any problem later on. But when I landed, I had to walk through the street because the whole town was half a kilometer. And from one end to another end, it's a half a kilometer, and nobody, I mean, there was no telephone. So if you had to meet anybody, you had to go personally uh, and meet him. And when you uh, went to meet a person, on the way, you could meet the whole town and you keep on saying, Salam, Salam, Salam Alaikum, Salam Alaikum, Ram, 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 Ram. Then the whole, whole town knows that you are in, uh, I mean, uh, so by the, t uh, by the time I came down, came down from the boat, practically the whole town knew that some uh, new creature has come. <laughs> and uh, and then the guy who came to receive me, because uh, ITL had only two persons, and the guy who came to receive me, he said, we are having dinner tonight uh, outside. So, oh, coming from Baroda, dinner outside, I said, this is something uh, quite exciting. <laughs> so I said, okay. So, and we went there, there were 10, 12. In those days, uh, Indians uh, means uh, Generally, two or three communities. Among Gujaratis, there were all Sonis. Okay. Others were Sindhis who, who, who dealt in textiles. And then uh, Malayalis. Mm. Uh, th that's all. That's all. Mm. And uh, so this party was uh, the residence of a Sindhi. Mm. I went there. Did not go to home for change also. Just ship mm. to... Um, uh, to the office uh, uh, because at six o'clock. Uh, and then you had a room on top of the office. No, no, no. no? Uh, there was it. It, 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 it was different. Uh, you know where Ambassador Hotel is there now, mm. just opposite to Ambassador Hotel. There was a uh, wooden uh, building, and uh, 
Mr. Duff, you know, financial uh, Bill, Duff. Uh, Bill Duff, he also used to stay, but he subsequently came and stayed there. So, but uh, this party was where uh, HSBC mm. building is there. Not, not new HSBC building, let us say Bank of Baroda. Uh, HSBC used to be. Yes. And uh, that was the place where dinner was there. And what was dinner? Meat cooked in one bowl. And the uh, khubus brought from the bakery. Plenty of uh, red label. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, th there was no other label available okay. at that time. <laughs> And, uh, and uh, because the red label was available in seven rupees a bottle, mm. and the soda was not available. Mm. <laughs> they used to bring sodas from Singapore. Mm. So if uh, I, I I did not drink, mm. I had not learned yet. Mm. So you're, you're telling us for the audience, or mm, yes, yes, you yes, want uh, us to believe yes, it? Yes, yeah, uh, please believe me. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So soda was not available. Sodas used to come from Singapore. Mm. And soda would cost more than the whiskey. Okay. Because a bottle of whiskey can give you 20 pegs, mm. and soda will give you one peg, and cost was almost the same. Mm. So people used to discourage the guest mm. for soda. Mm. Soda mat mango, mm. whiskey pilo jasti. <laughs> so that. The In fact, water may have been more expensive than whiskey also. Uh, water, no, water was there, but uh, it came uh, on donkeys. Uh, but uh, uh, water, yes, uh, water. But uh, so I mean, water. Since there was no electricity, mm. the refrigerators were also not there, mm. fans were not there, air conditioner mm. was there. The, the water was always uh, warm water, mm. so it would not give you a good taste with the, with the whiskey. And the soda is. Uh, Yes. Something uh, different. Mm. Yeah, water used to be brought by donkeys. <coughs> All the uh, it it was one one of the local Bedouin uh, profession. Mm. They would bring water from Jumeirah. Mm. I mean, far places was a little sweeter mm. than the uh, nearer one. But in both the cases, the water would come in teens, on two teens, on one on each side of the donkey. Okay. So this little saltish water will cost you four anas. I don't know how many of you know anas. Yeah, quarter yeah. rupee. Yes. Quarter rupee. Sixteen anas 16 and a rupee. Sixteen anas a rupee. So four anas per teen, mm. and the sweeter water will take will cost uh, eight anas. Mm. But uh, it was very energetic water because we could see cockroaches, flies, ants in, in the water and we had to clean it, uh, make it potable. So that's why you prefer red label. <laughs> 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 Safely. <laughs> okay. Okay. So Ram, as a young professional, you came, you worked here and then uh, after some time, uh, your mother found a bride for you in Pune? Uh, no. My brother found it. Your brother found it. Okay. <laughs> Tell us about it. Energy uh, is here. So yes, 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 yes. Let her hear this side of the story. Yes. You are, you are really digging uh, so many things which uh, people don't know. Mm. Yes. Uh, uh, we were in Baroda and my elder brother took me to Pune. Let, let us find, try to find elder out. Elder brother Hotu. Hotu. Mm. Hotu. Uh, let, let, let us try, try to find out a mm. girl for you. Okay. And uh, so I would be honest, it's not, not uh, that we did not see a uh, few girls. He took me. I mean, the matchmakers are there. In, mm. uh, yes. And this is a totally arranged, arranged marriage. Arranged marriage. Uh, okay. Uh, mm. Because I always say that uh, uh, love may be blind, but marriage is eye opener. Mm. <laughs> It's an eye-opener, very good, very but, good. But in our case, <laughs> in, in, in our case, we blindly married, mm. and then fell in love. <laughs> and then fell in love, okay, okay. 
So that, that is much easier yes. uh, in that way. And this is exactly what, what I would advise everybody to do. Mm. do uh, because, because falling in love uh, early and then uh, uh, subsequently it, uh, uh, I, uh, marriage becomes eye-opener. Mm. So uh, I went to her house. Mm. Uh, she was uh, as pretty as uh, she is today. She is today, mm. very yes. good. Uh, um, and uh, hardly we, we had uh, hardly any conversation, but it was love at first sight, mm. uh, <laughs> without talking. And second sight and, and so on. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes. <laughs> so then after that, uh, after uh, our first meeting, we went to, I went to Japan because I had a business trip. Mm. And I think after maybe 10 or 12 days, mm. I received a, a cable. In those days, there was no telexes. Hmm. Neither there was a telex, nor email, nor uh, faxes. Hmm. Even telefax was not available. Hmm. There were cables. Hmm. And uh, people were very really genius hmm. while sending the cables because uh, if you send seven letter cable, hmm. that covers a minimum charges. Hmm. Okay. Seven letters. Seven letters. And there was the LT cable hmm. which had 22 letters, mm. 22 words, mm. and that was also covering that minimum, but uh, delivery will be delayed in mm. case of a letter telegram. Mm. So he sent me XF mm. cable. Okay. Uh, XF cable means seven words. Seven words. Mm. Uh, top of uh, will be, of course, address of the company where I was uh, stationed in mm. Uh, mm. Japan. Mm. Congratulations, mm. yourself engaged. Engaged. Hotan. Already engaged. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh -huh. so that the, the, the congratulations was uh, done by me. Seven <laughs> words, okay, okay. Seven words, uh, uh -huh. and you, you are self engaged. Yes. Uh, I did not send the uh, I mean cable mm. back to him, but mm. uh, I sent the letter immediately. I said thank you. So from Pune, she moved to Baroda to, to yes, be with you. Yes, yes, yes. And then you came back to Dubai alone. Huh? You came back to Dubai alone. Yes, I came to because. Uh, in those days, most of the companies, I mean, the life in Dubai was such that there were not many women. Yes. And uh, companies also dis did not encourage uh, to take uh, uh, women wife, women. Wives, so, yeah. mm. so most of the people lived uh, alone. Mm. Which year was this? Uh, 66, 1966. Okay. But subsequently, uh, by late 60s, mm. Late 60s, it, it opened up. Mm. There were a few people, mm. like if we say Mr. Lula, mm. he used to work in an oil company. Mm. His wife was there. Mm. It was with him. Okay. Uh, I, I remember when, and uh, like uh, Hiro Jashanmal, mm. Jashanmal, sir. Mm. She, uh, and she, incidentally, she was the first woman mm. in the whole of Dubai to own a car. Okay. I okay. mean, okay. Uh, this is uh, regular. Car among women, it, it, it was she mm. who bought it. And then we had one or, not one or two, but actually one only. Mr. Kirpalani, he used to work with uh, uh, British Bank of the Middle East. Mm. And uh, he was a very senior officer and uh, he had a private generator in his house. His mm. wife was also. So the, I mean, you could count on uh, uh, fingers the ladies who used to live here. Mm. And then when did you have... Uh, are, 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 are you uh, clear? I mean, your sound is clear. Can you hear? Uh, yes. Because I think after last are, two occasions... Are you, are you, are you, in, sure that you, are you enjoying or feeling bored? Huh? <laughs> okay. Otherwise, we'll have both of us walk around <laughs> down the aisle. Okay. Yes. So, uh. then tell us about your uh, career with, uh, you know, ITL group as uh, a pro young professional, young junior professional, you moved up, you became a partner, you became the chairman now. Mm. How did that journey proceed? Well, when, I mean, in those days, uh, even when I came, mm. there was no discrimination or difference between the bosses and the people who work. Mm. They used to do, um, most of the owners of the companies, they were uh, cooking at night, although they, in, uh, during, during daytime, they would be keen competitors. Mm. 
but at night they would sit together and eat. Mm. Uh, I, I remember Mr. Muruj, my senior colleague, mm. who's not uh, well, um, mm. and uh, along with uh, various other uh, Sindhis, so one will cut the onion, another will clean uh, utensils, and another will uh, make chapati, and, and so they will, they will the share, the they tasks. divide the mm. responsibility and uh, eat. Mm. So when I came here, it was total office work. Mm. When you say office work, uh, right from collecting the post of uh, mm. mail from mm. post, office. Uh, post office, but it was uh, quite exciting. Mm. Uh, because mail will come twice a day, twice a week. Mm. And people were eager to get uh, letters from their dear ones from uh, India. Mm. There will be newspapers mm. and uh, hawala business, uh, hundi business was very common. Uh, people will wait for that. Mm. And outside, mm. uh, because no sooner the mail arrived, post office, people, <coughs> people, uh, the people in the post office itself, mm. they would start sorting. Mm. So every two minutes, mm. we will keep on opening the box, box. collect the letter, mm. and start reading there. Because, and uh, that was a spot where I was ab able to see every top local there. Mm. So they would read their mail, mail. and uh, again uh, stay back. In the meantime, we will chat. Mm. And, uh, uh, it was a good meeting place. Uh, yes, I mean, I mean there, there was no better networking than that. Yeah. And uh, when I say top means top, let, mm. let it be Ali Aves, uh, Abdul Rahim Galadari, Abdul Wahab Galadari, mm. and uh, uh, Sultan Aves, all, all these people, the, the Jum, Juma Majid, all, all would come yeah. there and uh, uh, I mean, take out the. In fact, Isa Salel Kurg writes that. Oh, yes, Isa, Isa Salel He used to work in the post office at one time. Initially, he started uh, his career there. in post office, mm. then he went to British Bank of the Middle yeah. East. Yes, and uh, uh, then he started business, grounding, I remember very well. And mm. uh, uh, grounding was uh, uh, held by one uh, Indian, mm. uh, one Bhatia family, and from there. The he agency went to. Went to uh, the agency went to. Well. Mm. Mm. Yes, grounding was a big brand. Bank, big brand. And, uh, German uh, brand. Yes, yes. German brand. And, uh, he had a very close uh, relation with uh, the ruler also, Isha mm. Saleh mm. <coughs> And when post office started, mm. see, uh, the ruler himself was involved mm. in allotting the post, of, mm. post boxes. Mm. I, I don't know how it, uh, uh, I was not there at that time, mm. but uh, first five uh, boxes were given to locals. Mm. And among foreign companies, mm. we were the first company to get it. Our PO box number is six. Six, okay. So it is very, it's very interesting now when we have got millions of uh, boxes. Yes. And uh, we have this six. Number six. But uh, I mean, if uh, Sheikh Rashid mm. wanted to have number one box for himself, mm. Mm. or he, I mean, he, he could uh, do without, without it also, mm. but he also, the ruler's office has a uh, box. Yeah, box number. I mm. think it is 26 or 27, mm. but number one was given to uh, Al Gurair. Al Gurair. So mm. this, is, uh, this shows how much uh, respect and value for the businesses. Uh, the business the rulers uh, always have been given to the business community. Business community. Mm. And so from those days to the present day, how has been the journey? Uh, you know, the, journey has been very, very smooth. Mm. God has been very kind. Mm. I have taken the journey as it comes. Mm. If somebody says I'm a visionary, no. Mm. There's no, no planning. Mm. There's a, I mean, whatever is destined mm. has to happen. Mm. So whatever comes on my way, I have accepted it. Mm. And uh, uh, I have tried to do best of it. Mm. So from <clears throat> From office assistant, mm. <coughs> when uh, I used to work in the office, mm. the Sindhi in me mm. always came out. Yes. How long you can do this? Mm. How far you can do that? Mm. So we, we had an accountant. Mm. 
he would discourage me from doing the business. Samples will come by post and he would open his drawer and put it in the drawer. Nothing was done about the samples. I used to tell him, why don't you give me samples so that I can go and work in the market and do some business. He said, no, no, you are already doing so much and you are so hard working. Where is the time <coughs> for you to go? Now, if we run this way, how long you can continue? The once he went for a washroom, uh, because uh, in those days, uh, no, uh, uh, no office or shops had uh, washroom inside. So he had gone out. What I did, I opened the drawer, took the samples, and went on the Dera site. I was risking that as an accountant, he may refuse to compensate me for the Abra fair. Uh, it, it, it was one ana at that time. So I said, he may refuse to give me one ana because I, I, I had gone without permission. It, it was unauthorized travel. Huh? The charter accountant must be knowing. You took the risk. <laughs> so, so I went there on the other side and uh, I could get the order. So my first order of, of my life in... Uh, uh, Dubai, I brought the order, I said, I went, he asked me, where did you go? I said, I went there aside. He said, why? Without asking me. I said, yes, you, but you, you could leave the shop, so, uh, I mean, open, there was no risk involved. So, I said, I brought the order. Now, he could not say no. It was 125. Hundred and twenty-five dollars order, but it was quite big at that time. Huh? Okay. <laughs> and, uh, order, order was there. So that one anna unauthorized trip was worthwhile. Uh, he he gave no, no, he gave me one anna. He gave you. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. And maybe more. <laughs> no, only, yeah. only one anna. One anna. A bit more. Actually, it was one anna going, one anna coming. <laughs> so <laughs> it it was two annas which I had to okay. risk, risk it. but. Uh, but Sindhis take risk. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> we know it very well. So, okay. <clears throat> so th that way, and uh, the guy who was my first customer is Musa Ji, Karim Ji. Mm. I think Mangaba must be knowing him. He must have heard. And uh, after so many years, maybe around after 50 years, I saw him. Uh, Gary, you have missed, missed the fun, but welcome. <laughs> so, no, no, we'll uh, charge two and from <laughs> Gary. <laughs> so, <clears throat> and, and those sets were, you know, uh, the order which I got was the porcelain set, ashtray, cigarette case, and lighter. Mm. Okay. Hmm? 125, one, one, 125 dollars worth order and that was my start the, the business went on and uh, it, it went on multiplying and that was the sailors market those at that time whatever you bring you could sell there was no uh, uh, i mean what is today it's, it's a big challenge it's buyers market so many avenues available at that time any 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 anything you bring it will be uh, sold and sold at your price. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it, it's not only selling, uh, I mean, seller's market, but uh, one you could, could make command the price. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, all, all those uh, old timers mm -hmm. who, who have made their fortune or good, good money, mm -hmm. uh, not that, I mean, it required extra skill. Mm -hmm. I mean, sorry, the situation, uh, situation. The time was right. Yes, yes, yes. Let us, let us face the fact. So you mentioned about, uh, you know, as a Sindhi, you could not stay as a professional, as a, an office person, but you went out. When, but but uh, mm -hmm. you've also had a lot of interest in writing about Sindhi Earth, setting an Asil Sindhi, yes, yes, establishing yes, yes. that institution, etc. You took a lot of interest, but you also say that the younger generation are giving up the traditions, the old customs, the... So tell us a bit more about it. 
when you, you are going to I'm ask her. To no, no, when you are going to ask her about her mental health. <laughs> okay. Uh, see, I mean, the cast of independence, there is no parallel in India uh, like uh, Sindhis uh, who were sacrificed. They simply left everything. Uh, there was partition of Punjab, partition of Bengal, but uh, Sindh did not partition. So they, they left everything and they came. So it's very important uh, that we need, uh, and because they have, they got scattered all over the, the country, not only India, but all over the world. But with that, they started losing the identity, which is very dangerous. I mean, we are so particular, so, so uh, concerned about extinction of tiger uh, population. But uh, I wish we should concern, give that much concern, also extinction of Sindhi population. Mm. This is very important because after all, they belong to Mohan Jodharo civilization, which is 7,500 7, years old uh, thing. So there is a lot to be understood. So particularly that uh, identity comes from language and that language is diminishing. People, uh, people uh, don't... Uh, and uh, after coming from Sindh, people were so much involved in their roti kapra makan uh, uh, pursuits. Uh, pursuits. Mm. They totally started forgetting the language, which is very dangerous, which needs to be corrected. So my effort is very little in, in that. Uh, people are coming back. Uh, I have often been countered by young boys and Sometimes I say, why don't you speak in Sindhi? And I encourage everybody, every community should speak in their own mother tongue. It's very important, that is your identity. Uh, and that has a lot of background to learn from. I mean, uh, there, there's a history and a uh, uh, lot, lot of things to get out of. So I would say, why don't you speak in Sindhi? He say, uncle, Kali Sindhi, Sindhi baat karte ho. What do I lose if I don't speak? And what I gain if I speak? That's true. If you don't speak, you don't lose. If you speak, you don't gain much. Nothing. I think I told you that uh, uh, that day in the club. And I had no answer. Yes, I mean, he, he's right. He's managing his life very well. If he doesn't speak, uh, the language, what does he lose? Nothing. Then, uh, some time back, uh, same situation arose, I asked the boy the same way. <coughs> he replied the same thing. And there was a, a picture on the wall. I said, whose picture is that? And he said, this is my mother's picture. I said, is she alive? He said, no. I said, what did you gain by calling her your mother. Did you gain anything? And what did you, what would you lose if you had not said so? For us, it's a paper, framed paper. But you try to drive identity from that picture. You are driving identity from your mother, that she is my mother. Language is your mother and you need to Take your identity, so you can't lose your identity. Absolutely, absolutely. Now we'll move to Rachna. Yeah, because, because she has... A, I will ask her, I'll ask her. Actually, actually, I'll ask her to say a few words actually, in Sindhi. Actually, much more to offer. <laughs> I'll ask her to say, reply to me in Sindhi. Now let's see. Yes, sir, she speaks Sindhi. Yes, she yes. does? Okay. Very I read good. and write also. Very good. Very Why don't you... Good. Speak to him in Sindhi. Yeah. No, but I, I did want to tell you, hmm. uh, you know, because we grew up with such a strong Sindhi influence that yes. all the three of us have actually carried it wherever we've gone. Hmm. So I was uh, the president of the Sindhi Association in Miami. Hmm. 
And we, for the first time mm. in the history of the association, we had a Sindhi night mm. where we flew in uh, Sindhi artists from India. Very good. And we had a proper Sindhi night where everybody was dressed up Sindhi. Mm. We had Sindhi food. We had the children. I had trained the children to uh, dance on a Sindhi song. Mm. Um, the girl who introduced, mm. she tried to speak in Sindhi, or at least she, she said a few words in Sindhi and she talked about what it meant to her to be a Sindhi. Mm. And these are children from the States. So they're far further away than we are yes. uh, being in Dubai. Um, my sister, uh, Gauri, mm. the eldest one, she's mm. very involved. She always celebrates Cheti Chand and she'll bring the artists from all over to do that. Mm. Chetna in her own way in Dubai, mm. she's, I know she's done uh, the Natch mm. Sindhi something um, that they put together okay. over here. Okay. So, um, you know, promoting Sindhi art. Um, so I feel in our way we we try, mm. the youngsters, mm. I want to be fair, <laughs> but no, no, it's not uh, always easy. It's, it's amazing that you, you know, that you're carrying the tradition in, uh, you know, in the US, in, uh, right. in the Caribbean. And it's and not the, always easy to mm. do because, yes. because it's really mindsets that you mm. have to change. Mm. Because till I went to Miami, the Sindhi Association was only doing Bollywood. Mm. Um, there was really no Sindhi happening in the association. Mm. So, you know, but then it's old mindsets that you have to change and, mm. and the idea that, okay, we youngsters can come in and maybe make that change. Mm. So the older generation, maybe you need to step mm. aside. That's mm. hard for them to do. Um, so it's, it's a process. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Talking about process and mind and everything else, why did you choose to become uh, focused on psychology? You chose it. So a, since mm. I was five, mm. I think I wanted to become a lawyer. Okay. And everybody who knew me knew I wanted to become a lawyer, but mm. I wanted to become a lawyer in India and I wanted to fight for women's rights. Okay. So I was very hell bent on that. It did not happen. Mm. Um, Why he didn't allow you to do law or? Uh, no, no, uh, it just, it, 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 it didn't pan out. It, it, um, out. it was, okay. it was situation at that time. So mm. it did not pan out. Uh, <coughs> I will interfere here. She always used to say, I want to become lawyer and uh, criminal lawyer like uh, Ram Jethmanani. I say, you are too, 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 too short for that. <laughs> no, I, I, that was, but see, underlying, I think it was about helping people. Yes. Um, and so it was, um, so this, I did the next best thing, mm. which is helping people through mental health. Mm. Um, in the family, mm. in addition to a very strong Sindhi uh, grounding, yes. um, we've always seen both of them do... Uh, my earliest memories of my parents are doing things for other people. Social service. Right. Mm. So he's... I mean, we've always seen that and we've grown up with that. So it was, it was a part of who we are. And um, to me, it became a part of my value system. Mm. And I was privileged to be able to live my value system mm. because you see a lot of people, I tell my patients that we all have values that we hold very dear to our mm. heart and then we have life. Mm. And the bigger the distance between my values and what reality of my life is, that distance is mental health, mm. right? Because yes. that's where depression comes and that's where anxiety comes mm. in. So I've been privileged to be able to live off of my value and belief systems mm. and be able to help people in every capacity. Mm. Um, but it really came from them because both of them in their capacity, we've always seen um, do more than, I mean, um, I haven't, I, I still remember this because we were going to, I think we were traveling to India and there was this girl who came up to dad and um, she was thanking him. Mm. So, he did not know who she was. Mm. Um, and then she explained that she was one of the girls who he was, had sponsored mm. in India. And thanks to his sponsorship, mm. she was working with one of the ma major airlines today. Okay. He had no idea because it was an anom anonymous donation. Yes. But, I mean, she, he gave it to a student. He did not know which student, but she of course knew and she came up to him and she said, you don't know what you've done for me, mm. you've changed my whole life. Mm. It's things like that, um, that kind of stayed. Yes, sensitive, you know. thoughtful. Mm. Yeah, so that's how mm. mental health started. Mm. 
So tell us about your uh, recollections of your parents as an influence in terms of on all, I mean, all the three sisters. Sure. Mm. So we grew up seeing mom do everything for the community. I mean, mm. we were involved with the, the Indian Association, the Indian Ladies Association. Yes. A lot of charity was done. Mm. We girls got involved with that because I remember that her and Auntie uh, mm. Suri, mm. Uh, yes. Uncle Lula's, yeah. um, and they used to organize these charity drives. Mm. We girls used to be very involved with that. Mm. Um, and so, of course, she's been a major influence. One of the things that I really picked up from my mother is that forgive and forget. Mm. Just, it's okay. Mm. You know, whatever anyone does, just, just move, move on. on. Just move, move on. on. Mm. And those are great learnings to yes. have because it, it gives you a groundedness. Mm. If I had to sum up mm. what, what I think they've given us, mm. which I think every parent should try to, and we try to, mm. because now we three are parents, yes. um, is growing up with humility, mm. Um, the value for money, hmm. he was very particular. I still remember going and telling him, oh, dad, I want a car. Hmm. And he said, yeah, Toyota. Hmm. So I said, what? Hmm. He said, you want a car to take you from place A to place hmm. B? You'll get that car. Hmm. So really that, that value for money, which has stood us so strong in all these years, hmm. and honoring your parents hmm. and your elders, hmm. because we've always seen him hmm. in everything that he's done. He's honored his mom. Yes, yes, so. yes. Including his book, which he is, dedicates to his mother. Yes, yes. Right. So, and, uh, no, I think, I think if we could teach our children that, mm. we would be great. In the world of counseling, psychology, uh, what have you seen? Uh, of course, have you have practiced mostly in the US. And Not my, really. I also actually here? practiced, okay, so my career started here mm. where I started with Indian High School and DPS, mm. which is where I met you. Yes. And then I ended up heading the 21 schools yes. of the GEMS group where I was the counseling coordinator. Mm. Mm. That was my final stint here. But while I was here, we did a lot of other stuff. So mm. I did, I ran a parent support group for ADHD, mm. uh, kids, parents of kids with ADHD, which mm. is attention deficit hyperactive yes. disorder. We didn't have that at that mm. time, and it's mm. a very big problem here. So we true, ran true, a parent true. support group. We also, I also partnered with the Indian Consulate, mm. and we did a volunteer program on the weekends mm. for anyone who walked into the consulate who wanted help. Okay. I worked with the Ministry of Education. I worked with Princess Haya, and we were establishing learning support in the yes, schools. Yes. So I did that, then I got married. Then you got married. Okay. So then I moved to the Cayman Islands. Mm. I worked with the government over there. Mm. Um, in the Department of Counseling Services, mm. uh, where we did a lot of work uh, with, in general, but also with addictions, mm. because addictions is very big in the islands. Mm. Um, I moved to Miami about four years back, mm. so then the Sindhi in me came out. <laughs> okay. And so there, the business, um, and then it gave birth That's to Bakshani Counseling Care. Right? Yes. Okay, okay. And so I still remember discussing with dad, and we creating the logo and all of that. Yes. Um, but that's about uh, four years back that okay. I started okay. Baksani Counseling Care. No, in fact, all the three daughters have done remarkably well, which is a, a tribute. In fact... Uh, in their chosen fields, field. they have done exceptionally well. In fact, I... Touch wood. My wife and I were in uh, The Hague in Netherlands, in Holland, uh, in was it in April? It was in April. And uh, Venu Rajamani, who is to be the Consul General here, is the ambassador there. And he talked about uh, your elder sister, Gauri. The tremendous work that she did in St. Martin's in, yes. Uh, yes, because of, during uh, the cyclone. Uh, yeah, during the hurricane. hurricane. During the hurricane, uh, yes. he, she, she was um, instrumental in evacuating uh, two plane loads of people from mm. uh, St. Martin to Tremendous, outside. tremendous. Yeah. And, uh, uh, Venu Rajamani is the uh, ambassador for, covering that area because the, that is a Dutch island. It's a yeah, Dutch island. Yeah, yes, yes, Netherlands yes, Antilles, yes, as yes. they call it. Yeah. As a matter of fact, last week only he said, I want to go again to St. Martin, but uh, you have to come with me. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, Ram, uh, tell me what message do you have for 
the Indian younger business community, the, your colleagues, your friends. Young, young and not so young. Young and not so young, yeah. Young and not so young, yeah. Mm. I think uh, my simple, which, which I've been repeating, that don't try to be heavy, mm. because elephants don't fly, birds fly. Mm. And if we are birds, we are always comfortable. Mm. And uh, I uh, thought of one uh, quotation today, mm. I, I don't, but exact wordings, uh, I think I, I, I have to uh, re see, th see this paper. I hope it's not from the Hindi cinema. Huh? Huh? Because you, yes. in your book you write very much from yes. Jina Yaham, Varna Yaham. Yes, <laughs> Kesi Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I never realized that you are such a singer. Aaj kal, aaj or kal. Kal. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. I, I wrote it. I said, don't waste time in justifying yourself. This is uh, very important. Don't waste time in justifying yourself. Those who trust you need no justification. And those who do not trust you will not believe your justification. So you move on with the world. Chalte raho, chalte raho and keep on doing your job. Because if you justify, that is not going to work. And people who love you, they don't need their justification. And people don't need you, they will not trust your justification anyway. So, it doesn't carry. justify to give them justification. <laughs> just as well. <laughs> yes. This, so, this is uh, uh, the message for young and not so young. Yeah. Tell us about the NRI forum. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. He, he has a question from the. Uh, Di uh, no, <laughs> dais about a a NRI yes, forum. Bharat Bhai. Uh, Bharat Bhai. Overseas Economic Forum. The amount of work which he has done for NRIs. In, uh, in 1987, the first uh, Overseas Indian Economic Forum was formed. And I still distinctly remember that uh, Madhukar Gupta from India Innovation Center who became uh, Home Secretary later, Arun Kumar was the council general and uh, Rusi Patel, a charter accountant, and also the first chairman of uh, charter accountant chapter. And uh, we had uh, S.P. Srivastava. And um, they found me a handy solution to chair the Overseas, uh, Overseas Indian Economic Forum, which is actually uh, the body which subsequently merged into IBPC. So where, where, where we are sitting today, actually it is dry. the roots are IB, uh, Overseas Indian Economic Forum and Bharat Bhai. And even Mr. Sudesh Agarwal Bhai is sitting. He, has, he was a member of uh, that uh, Overseas. How about Gary, you were there? You, are, you started from IBPC. Okay, so, so, you, are, so you, you joined the baby. Now, I don't know how many of you know that Overseas Indian Economic Forum has contributed so much for the NRIs uh, enormously. India used to have estate duty and estate duty was a draconian law and if you had to pay honestly, you had to pay 102 percent. It looks funny but that, that is a fact. When Prithviraj Kapoor died, Raj Kapoor did not have enough money to pay for that property where Prithvi Raj Kapoor was staying because you had to pay total white money and the market. If I, if I had a house which I have bought at 2 lakh rupees and at the time of my death I was, uh, and the price is 20 lakhs, I have to pay estate duty on 20 lakhs and over 100 percent. Yes. I, 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 I see Mr. Mahendra Asher sitting with me, the, the first secretary of Overseas Indian Economic Forum. I think he needs a, a round of applause. Yes. Yeah.
Yes. Uh, 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 I mean, uh, anyone from Overseas Indian Economic Forum sitting here? Uh, Naveen Kapoor, okay. Uh, Dr. Bhutania, of course, uh, Mangawa. Uh, I, 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 I'm, eh? Oh, 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 yes, 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 yes. See, so this is, this is called ownership. This is called ownership that, uh, I mean, overseas Indian Economic Forum is not forgotten. That, uh, so, I, there was a, a lady who had lost her husband living in Dubai and the amount of 100,000 rupees was uh, deposited with the Bank of Baroda. So after the death of her husband, when she claimed that amount, it was not given and uh, uh, the bank asked them to bring the probate from uh, the consulate. Consulate said you get clearance from income tax uh, people. So we had to take a representation to uh, India. Pranam Kumar Mukherjee was the finance minister. Mrs. Gandhi was uh, uh, still there. She was the prime minister. And uh, interestingly, estate duty was the state subject. If a person died in Gujarat, the Gujarat government got the estate duty. If he died in Punjab, Punjab government will get. So it was very easy. When I met uh, Pranam Kumar Mukherjee, I said, sir, my question is very simple. Estate duty is a state subject. What can you tell us who gets the money who gets the estate duty if a person dies in Dubai? He was uh, answerless. He said, what, what are you trying to say? I say, leave NRS because they are very honest. <laughs> they keep their money in the bank. <laughs> Unlike India, they have got many ways to manage their fund. So I said, leave NRS from this estate duty problem. And uh, he said, okay, let me try. And this continued. Mrs. Gandhi passed away. She left only 180,000 rupees for estate duty to be charged. So, I mean, she, she left only 180,000 uh, in the account. For, then she, was, she passed away. Rajiv Gandhi came. Then finally, VP Singh cleared uh, estate duty and not only for NRIs but for all Indians. Today India is a country where there is no estate duty. They have per perhaps forgotten, I hope there is no government person here, uh, <laughs> they have totally forgotten yes. that there used to be estate duty once upon a time and we need to introduce because there is nothing wrong if, if a person dies with money if government gets a little bit up, uh, in USA there is a SA duty, in England there is a SA duty, Hong Kong has a SA duty, but that is 5, 10 percent, 15 percent that way. Huh? Yes. Uh, no, no. Uh, no, no. This is for this. I have said that there is no government in the government. So that, that was a great, I think people don't know even this, this was Dubai's contribution. I don't take... Uh, the credit myself, but uh, this is Dubai's contribution for whole of India to abolish estate duty. It's not, it, it, it was not a small achievement. Lot of facilities which now which you are enjoying has just come because of the hard efforts of the overseas Indian Economic Forum. Thank where you. Where Ram Voksani was the chairman and myself for the convener of the NRI Grievances yes. Committee. We had uh, Bharat Bhai in his heydays, of course, he is, continues to be uh, still young at heart, but uh, the uh, contribution he has done to overseas Indian Econ Economic Forum is unmatchable. Thank you. Thank you, Bharat Bhai. Let's give a round of applause. Thank you very much for sharing such knowledge. I came to Dubai 20 years back, and I've seen you contributing to India Club, Indian High School, IBPC even in the ICAI. How you are contributing a lot to the community, and this we can see it for, I born in 1968 and you came, I was just making the calculation in 1959. It's a very long period of time. So I ask audience to give a big round of applause. And Thank my, you. 
so what are the how do you find time and how you are able to contribute continuously is any what is your aspirations or how what is how are you able to contribute so much in spite of doing business driving force i think when we hear that mr modi is working 16 hours a day he finds the time so finding the time is uh, not a problem for time will find you uh, you sh you should have only inclination to work and uh, i I'm, i'm sure uh, that inclination is itself itself will keep you uh, young and active when i came here uh, in those days in, there was no electricity and we used to uh, operate on kerosene lanterns at that time my immediate boss was one one mr punjabi who would tell me at 6 o'clock chalo chalo abhi dukan band karo ghar mein ghar mein chalte hai beer pe beer peete he is the one who made me drink beer he taught me but i would tell him baba beer tum piyo main laltin leke ghar ko chalta hu and i will finish my work some some how this has been uh, right from the beginning so whatever we have to do time time will come thank you very much i'm sorry i have come late uh, but we appreciate what you have done for so many years but i have a question for rachna and not for you and you thank have, you thank you and thank you uh, you have you said that you have uh, studied uh, and practiced uh, psychology i want to ask you two question what's the difference between stress and depression and how do you avoid it and in this during this time of the world where everything is sixes and sevens and no business is doing very well anywhere in the world so how do you avoid stress and depression and what is stress and what is depression so when we talk about depression we're talking now about clinical stuff right so it has to be something that's debilitating we all have stress we all go through stuff in life that that we find challenging to deal with and there's actually also good stress so stress is not necessarily a bad thing because sometimes we get stressed and that stress drives us to do certain things in life so we don't run away from stress now the difference between stress and depression is depression is a debilitating mental condition so at when a person if one of my patients is depressed that means they're not sleeping well they're not eating well they're not taking care of themselves they're not able to do they're not able to enjoy life that they used to a lot of sadness um basically not being able to function so when the dsm which is our bible for mental health people uh when the dsm describes a mental disorder it has to be something that literally leaves you not being able to function um stress is not like that because stress we all go through it we in america we're very good with medicating people for everything where really what we need is lifestyle changes what you need to do is in life you have to put in things that are helpful to you to manage your stress so things like eating right things like yoga meditation exercising spending time with family doing things that bring you joy that's very important to manage your stresses because we know that we cannot run away from stress i don't know if if that was a clear description of both of them and why it was different because depression is very it it's an extreme form of um sadness anxiety is an extreme form of fear so when we talk about disorders we really talk about extreme forms where the person just cannot function how do you help them so there's two parts to it um i am trained in uh dialectic behavior therapy what we do is so it's a mind body connection right so cognitive which is your thoughts and behavior which is your actions um i can't really control emotions i can't control feelings right so if i feel if i tell you right now feel happy you can't really do that unless you do something that makes you happy or you think about something that makes you happy so we work on teaching our patients how to change thoughts 
and change behaviors to be able to manage because we can't also control thoughts because thoughts just come to us. Um, I am trying to, um, through Bakshani Counseling Care, I am trying to do, bring the world of tele-mental health to Dubai eventually um, through some of the hospitals here because I think one of the biggest things over here is we don't have affordable mental health help. So hopefully through tele-mental we would be able to provide some of that and deal with the stresses and depression. Thank you very much.